Welcome to I Can Science That. This is going to be episode three of Aerospace Crash Course. Last time we talked about the concept of stability and how that applies to the pitch of an aircraft. Last time we kept things very high level and we said that simply that this does happen um, and we didn't really explain how it happened. I believe I did mention that um, there was going to be some fundamentals to cover in order to truly understand how that all works. And that's today's episode. Today we're going to talk about the concept of angle of attack and how that influences some of the some of the, the terms that we're talking about that we're going to need for to go further into stability. In this context, angle of attack is an aircraft term and it has nothing to do with optical phenomenon. Um, uh, the angle of attack here is the angle between the aircraft and the air that it's flying through. Um, let's just show it with the illustration. I'm showing here that although the aircraft's got its nose up a little bit, it is flying to the left. And if the aircraft is flying to the left through relatively still air, we can then say that the air is moving relative to the aircraft to the right. Now, it is an aircraft, and so it is the speed of the wind, speed of the air, relative to the wings that's going to create our lift that we need. So let's extend the direction that the wind is moving straight across. Um, obviously there will be disturbance of the wind as it impacts the surfaces of the aircraft and, and that propeller, but that's not, that's not part of the angle of attack when, uh, when considering an entire aircraft. The, the wind will vary throughout the aircraft. So in order to take sort of an average, we're going to just consider the direction of the wind out here before it has been influenced by the aircraft itself. Um, I think you've, you can see now that there is an angle here between the direction the plane is pointing and the direction the wind is coming towards the aircraft. That is our angle of attack. And it is typically abbreviated by the Greek letter alpha. Um, in, in fact, it is so commonly called alpha that we will often spell it out in English letters as the word alpha. Uh, so if you see the word alpha or AOA, um, those all mean angle of attack. I wanted to show some angle of attack, so I went and found this on YouTube. I'll put the link down in the description so you can watch the whole thing. Pretty cool footage of an F-16 trainer coming in for a touch and go. And you can see there that the nose is high relative to the direction right there. It's flying straight, just gonna touch the ground and take off again. See how it's keeping its nose up above a little bit. That's what we call angle of attack. Here's another video um, of an F-22 going into a vertical climb. I like this one because you can see the wingtip vortices really show the direction of travel. So if I'm going to ask you, what is the angle of attack of that aircraft at that point? Um, let's watch it again and, and see if you can figure out what is the angle of attack. You might have said that straight up is 90 degrees, so the angle of attack looks like 90 degrees. Uh, but no, the, remember the angle of attack is the angle between the aircraft and the direction that the wind is hitting the aircraft. You can tell from those wingtip vortices that the aircraft is flying straight upwards, uh, so the wind will be coming straight at the aircraft, meaning the angle of attack will actually be approximately zero here. I also wanted to show what an extremely high angle of attack would look like. Here we have an Su-30 and an air show showing with the flares what the direction of flow is, and I think you can see this is an extremely high angle of attack. The math warning bit is maybe kind of a joke, but um, some people honestly do not like math and don't want to see it. Uh, I would encourage you, though, to just go ahead and, and continue with this and at least skim through the following slides with me. Uh, we're going to look at a graph. We're going to look at that same lift equation from before. And that's as complicated as we're going to get. Um, we're not going to be very complex at all. So let me introduce you to an old friend of mine, the NACA Double-Ot 12 airfoil. This shape is just a typical shape that could be a generic wing, for example. And over here on the left, we have uh, a graph that shows wind tunnel data 
for an airfoil for a wing of that kind. So they put they, they made that wing, they put it in a wind tunnel, and then as they varied the angle of attack or alpha, they measured the lift coefficient and presented that data for us here, and we have it in a graph. This is that math that I was warning you about. This is our old friend, the lift equation. And the, the lift coefficient right here, that is the same lift coefficient from our little diagram. So uh, we can read a lift coefficient off of this graph and plug it into our equation right there. That's, uh, that's that where we're going to get the lift coefficient. Now, I think you're going to see that as you vary the alpha or angle of attack, you're going to get a different lift coefficient. And that's, that's how we're going to vary the lift in this equation. Okay, so as we increase the alpha, I think you'll see that the lift coefficient also increased. And in this region right here, it's an extremely linear or very straight region of the graph. So anywhere in here, just a little change of alpha will create a little change in CL and it'll be nice and straight, nice and linear. Up until up here at this angle of attack, you can see that the lift has just started crashing down very suddenly and we call that stall. Uh, so as long as you stay between these stalling points, we get a remarkably straight linear response uh, of the lift coefficient based on the angle of attack. Okay, so if we increase our angle of attack, we increase our lift coefficient. If we increase our lift coefficient, we increase our lift and the plane starts to climb. Increasing the angle of attack increases lift in general, um, with the caveat being that you can take it too far. As long as we've got uh, the lift equation up, let's take a quick look at airspeed, which appears here in the, in the equation. If we are to increase the airspeed, for example, I think you can see that that will cause the lift to also increase. Increasing airspeed increases lift. So if the lift of the aircraft has increased, it no longer balances the weight, the aircraft is gonna start climbing. We're going to need to do something to bring that lift back down. And taking a look at this equation, you can see something jumping out at you that will let you do that. The lift coefficient right there will allow you to reduce the total lift if you can somehow reduce the lift coefficient. How do we do that? Remember this chart. How do I reduce the lift coefficient? Well, if I reduce the angle of attack, that'll get the job done. So what we see is that if you increase the velocity, you must decrease the angle of attack in order to maintain level flight. Uh, and conversely, of course, if you decrease the velocity, you need to increase your angle of attack. And as you increase your angle of attack, watch out for that stall point. There's a point where you've nosed up too high and you're going to, to lose lift. Now that we know what angle of attack is, let's apply that to this diagram we have from some videos ago. Uh, first, I want to blow this up so we can get a better look at it. If I were to ask, what do you think the angle of attack of this aircraft is? What would you say? I'll give you a moment to think about that. This is the direction the aircraft is pointing. So if you said the angle of attack looks about zero, then I understand where you're coming from, but no, that's not the answer I'm looking for. Remember that the aircraft is actually flying parallel to the surface, and that is in this diagram in that direction. So assuming the air is relatively still, uh, the wind will be coming up towards the aircraft from below like so, and if we look at that angle, that is the angle of attack alpha right there. And so we can see this aircraft is flying with its nose very high. Remember, in a, a globe model situation such as this, the gravity vector points straight towards the center of the Earth. In other words, the weight of the aircraft is considered to be pointing 
in that direction, down at a, at a diagonal on this diagram. Um, and, and yes, that makes it quite confusing. Um, let me rotate this thing just upright so that it's a little more comfortable to look at. I think in this orientation, it's more plain to see that the, the weight of the aircraft points straight down, the aircraft is moving to the left, and the angle of attack is very much nose high. Interjecting from the editing room, let me clarify. As we saw in the previous video, the natural stability of the aircraft would have brought the nose down long before it got this extreme. Uh, this is just the artifact of me not correcting the rotation uh, in the first video where we hadn't covered stability yet. A repeated criticism that I have gotten on these, this series of videos is that I am assuming the globe. Uh, and I'd like to address that briefly right now. The, this entire series was kicked off by the supposition that this would not work on a globe. The claim from our flat earth friends was that the, the aircraft couldn't behave in the way that we observe that they truly do behave if the earth were in fact a globe. And so, yes, as we investigate what would happen if the earth were a globe, that begins by, by with the statement, if the earth were a globe. That is exactly what we were asked to do, and that is what we are doing. So, um, no, I am not proving that the earth is a globe. I am making no attempt to do so. I am not proving that the earth is flat. I'm not proving the earth is not flat. What we are doing is investigating what would happen if the earth were a globe. And so far we have discovered that aircraft work just fine if the earth is a globe. In fact, aircraft work just fine on a flat earth as well. Um, this whole dipping the nose type of line of thinking uh, is not a flat earth proof. It is not a globe earth proof. It is none of the above. So hopefully that would be very clear now. Um, we are not proving that the earth is a globe. We're not trying to prove the earth is a globe. We're trying to learn how aircraft work. And we are using the original question of whether an aircraft could work correctly on a globe uh, as the focal point of our investigations and our learning. So what did we learn in today's video? We learned that angle of attack or alpha it refers to the angle between the direction of the wind and the direction the airplane is pointing. Um, we learned that in general, increasing the angle of attack increases the overall lift on the aircraft, up until the stall point, that is. Uh, we also learned that increasing airspeed increases lift, and those two being related to each other through that shared lift equation tells us that as we increase the airspeed, we would want to decrease the angle of attack in order to maintain level flight, and vice versa. As you decrease your airspeed, you slow down, you need to get your nose up to keep yourself flying. If you slow down too much, you're gonna hit that critical angle where lift drops off and you come crashing out of the sky. Next video, let's take what we just learned about angle of attack and lift and apply that towards the question of how does stability work? Hopefully uh, you find that as interesting as I do. Um, we'll look at that, if all goes well, we'll be looking at that in the next video. See you out there.